Okay, everybody. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we uh, testify that there is no deities worthy of worship save and except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his last and final messenger. My dear beloved brothers and sisters, this session, our pre-Ramadan program was scheduled to be held at the masjid on April 18th tonight. And while we really, really wish to have had this program at the masjid, we, alhamdulillah, are trying to use the technology to the best of our abilities to still be able to bring the benefits of some of these reminders to myself and to all of you so that we may be reminded and somehow or the other bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from these words. Tonight, I begin with the dua that many of us, all of us know, Allahumma balighna Ramadan. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to please allow us to witness Ramadan because verily the barakah and the blessing of Ramadan is like no other time. And so we make this dua. But we also want to tonight begin by remembering so many of our Muslim brothers and sisters who made this dua and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took them back in his wisdom. That was their time. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for their forgiveness and for his rahmah and to, be, to allow them to answer their questions and en enlighten their graves and count them amongst those in Jannatul Firtaus. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to also have mercy on those that are still sick and struggling with this virus. We know our families, we know our friends who may have uh, contracted the virus and may be dealing with it. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them shafa. At this time, um, when one part of the ummah is hurt, all of the ummah is hurt. And we, in our hearts, feel this pain. Lastly, I want to also, there may be some on, on the webinar tonight and many that are not. I want to wholeheartedly thank all of the nurses and doctors and healthcare workers that are on the front line fighting to serve and help those that are afflicted with the disease, but also so many of our, our brothers and our sisters that are essential workers Maybe you work in transit. Maybe you work in uh, uh, the, the police department or the fire department, or maybe you work in some other necessary uh, uh, job. We thank you for going out there and continuing to do your work. So with, with that, I would like to begin the program tonight by just going over a few things. First and foremost, uh, we will have questions and answers specific to the topic. So inshallah, you can submit your questions by uh, clicking on the uh, Q&A button on the Zoom app. There's a little Q&A button and you can submit your questions from that uh, app and we'll take questions specific to the topic. Tonight's agenda is uh, simple. We'll begin with the recitation of Quran. Uh, Maulana Farzan Muhammad will do that. We'll have Brother Irshad Ibrahim talk about the benefits of fasting. And inshallah, Sheikh Nazim Habibullah will share his perspectives on how we can make this our best Ramadan. Inshallah, that is uh, our agenda for tonight. Uh, we'll begin. Uh, I'll ask uh, Maulana Farzan to recite from Surah Al-Baqarah. Uh, he'll be reciting from verses 183 to verse 187. Uh, Maulana Farzan, uh, many of you have not had an opportunity to meet him. He has recently joined us at a, a, a Sadiq Muslim organization, Majid as Sadiq, as our assistant imam. And he, um, uh, he studied in South Africa and has uh, joined us, as I mentioned earlier, just recently. So we're excited to have him here with us tonight, uh, Maulana Farzan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون أياما معدودا فمن كان منكم مريضا أو على سفر فعد تتم من ايام اخر وعلى الذين يطيقونه فديه طعام مسكين فمن تطوع خيرا فهو خير له وان تصوموا خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليسم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعا فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون أحل لكم ليلة الصيام الرفث إلى نسائكم هن لباس لكم وأنتم لباس لهن علم الله أنكم كنتم تختانون أنفسكم فتاب عليكم وعفى عنكم فالآن باشروهن وابتغوا ما كتب الله لكم وكلوا واشربوا حتى يتبين لكم الخيط الأبيد من الخيط الأسود من الفجر ثم أتم الصيام إلى الليل ولا تباشروهن وأنتم عاكفون في المساجد تلك حدود الله فلا تقربوها كذلك يبين الله آياته للناس كذلك يبين الله آياته للناس لعلهم يتقون 
Sadaqallahul Azim. Jazakum Allah Khairan, uh, dear uh, Maulana Farzan, thank you so much for the recitation. Inshallah, um, we will move uh, now into our first presenter, Brother Irshad Ibrahim. Brother Irshad is a uh, someone who is uh, not no longer new to us at Masjid al Uh He has been a teacher at our madrasa for, I think, over a year now. Uh, he studied at the Islamic University in Medina. He's actively involved in Dawa. Uh, also is a regular khatib at various masajid. Um, and we are indeed uh, lucky to have him uh, to be a part of our madrasa in teaching some of the older, older boys. Uh, inshallah, he will be talking to us tonight about some of the benefits of fasting. I'll uh, hand it over to Brother Irshad. Brother Irshad. Jazakallah <laughs> khair. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya'i wal mursaleen. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Amma ba'd. All praises for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions, and all those who follow him until the day of judgment. Alhamdulillah, there are tremendous wisdom and benefits of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is al-hakim, the all-wise. There is wisdom in everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated. Fasting in Ramadan, being a pillar of Islam, definitely has tremendous benefits and wisdom from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fasting has both religious and medical benefits. But inshallah, I will try to highlight some of the religious, some of the Islamic, benefits of fasting. Of course, the benefits of Ramadan are not limited or restricted to these benefits. But as you experience your fasting, you will find more and more benefits of Ramadan on your own. So inshallah, let's discuss some of the benefits of Ramadan. The first benefit is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us in Ramadan the ability to detach ourselves from the dunya and attach ourselves to the akhirah. We as Muslims, we as humans are caught between this world and the akhirah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us in this month of Ramadan to start detaching ourselves from the dunya. How do we detach ourselves from the dunya? by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us to stop eating and drinking for a portion of the day because food and drink have all the main ingredients of the shahawat, the desires. If you're hungry, do you have time to think about your desires? No, there is no energy and your mind is somewhere else because you're hungry and tired. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us to detach from the dunya and focus on the akhirah. Ramadan serves as a spiritual retreat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that we need some type of spiritual retreat. So he gave us Ramadan. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La rahbaniyata fil islam that there is no monasticism in Islam, but you come very close to it in Ramadan when you don't eat and don't drink for an appointed time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not push you towards an extended retreat where you go hungry for two or three days, rather just a short time during the day 
then you, you can eat and pray during the night to come closer to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows exactly how long human beings can go without food and drink. This is from his wisdom, azza wa jal. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us Ramadan as a spiritual retreat to reset and reprogram ourselves in preparation for the Akhirah. No wonder the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu anhum used to productively prepare their mind, their body, and their soul looking forward to this month of Ramadan six months in advance during which they used to pray to Allah to extend their lives to see Ramadan in good health. Then after it was over, they would reflect for the next six months upon their efforts and experience during Ramadan, supplicating to Allah to accept their fasting and good deeds. So we need to detach and use Ramadan for our preparation for the Akhirah. My brothers and sisters, the next benefit is that fasting helps us in striving for Ihsan, which means to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if we see him. And though we do not see him, yet he sees us. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Hadith Qudsi, Asawmuli that fasting is for me and I shall reward it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala singles out fasting from all other types of worship, saying, fasting is for me. Why? <clears throat> because no one knows whether you are fasting or not, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the best tool we can use in developing ihsan is fasting. <clears throat> Another benefit of Ramadan is that it provides an opportunity for spiritual elevation and repair. Now, if we have been distancing ourselves from Allah, the heart becomes hardened. The heart feeds on the shahawat, the desires, all the time. So if you don't pray, you don't want to pray, the heart doesn't. You don't want to do good deeds, the heart doesn't. The heart becomes lazy based on what you feed it. It, it is weighed down by shahawat, by desires. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in one hand, weakens the shaitan in the month of Ramadan. And how Allah weakens the shaitan? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala weakens the shaitan by being chained in the month of Ramadan. As Abu Huraira radiallahu an reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when Ramadan comes, the doors of paradise are open and the doors of hell are closed and the devils are chained. Someone may ask, why is it that shaitan still whispers in Ramadan? <clears throat> we say because the, because the chain that is being put on the shaitan, your shaitan depends on you. If you're not close to Allah, the chains will be very light. If someone is very close to Allah, the chains will be very heavy. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala weakens the shaitan by weakening the supply of the shahawat, the desires. So the chains of the shaitan depends on you. Then we can fill the rest of this time with the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fill it with Allah's worship in recitation of Quran, in lots of dua and adhkar. Why? By doing good deeds, Allah is weakening the shaitan. So this spiritual elevation doesn't happen except in the month of Ramadan or if you're traveling for Hajj or Umrah. So when you take advantage of Ramadan, 
you will experience spiritual elevation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us Ramadan to recharge our spiritual batteries and repair and strengthen our connections with him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and my sisters, the next benefit of Ramadan is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran to gain taqwa. Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyam, kama kutiba ala alladheena min qablikum, la'allakum tattakoon. That, O oh, you who believe, fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you in order that you achieve taqwa, in order that you become more conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> this is the purpose of fasting that Allah mentions in the Quran to attain taqwa. Now, what is taqwa? The word taqwa is derived from the Arabic root waqa, which according to one meaning is to be protected from the harmful. So taqwa is to save and protect yourself from things that harm you. We have in, in this, we have in Quran a dua, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana that our Lord give us good in this world and give us good in the hereafter and protect us from the, the punishment of the fire. <clears throat> so fasting and taqwa have a direct relationship. Fasting provides an opportunity for every believer to draw close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to protect himself from the punishment of the hellfire. But my dear brothers and sisters, taqwa really is developing a relationship with Allah that is really personal and intimate. So that wherever you are, or whoever is with you, you are conscious of Allah at all times. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, kunt, that have taqwa of Allah wherever you are. Meaning, it doesn't matter and should not matter if you are in the masjid or outside the masjid, at home or at work or with friends or co-workers or wherever you may be. You have to be conscious of Allah at all times. <clears throat> and fasting is the best way of developing this. Fasting is the best ibadah to develop taqwa, consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because what is the difference between fasting and the other ibadat, like salah and hajj? These ibadat are visible to others. People can see if you're praying or when you're performing hajj. But fasting cannot be seen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who truly knows the reality of this worship. So it is between you and Allah. Allah is watching me when I'm alone. And Allah is watching you when you're alone. So this develops taqwa because it develops the consciousness of Allah throughout the day while we're fasting. And that develops ibadah only for Allah Azza wa Jal. Then fasting for the entire month, it can then be developed into a habit of being conscious of Allah even after Ramadan. That's the benefit and wisdom of fasting to develop taqwa that will carry us after Ramadan. So if you're not feeling your fasting, if you're not feeling that you're developing the closeness and consciousness of Allah, then you have to check your fasting. My brothers and my sisters, the next benefit of Ramadan is that it challenges us to change. 
Ramadan forces us to make changes and adjustments on a daily basis. If we were not waking up for Fajr, Ramadan forces us to get up early. If we were not praying our five daily prayers, Ramadan forces us to make changes and pray on time. If there is a sin that we have to give up because of Ramadan, then it means that we can change and give up that sin in Ramadan. Then we can continue and stay away from that sin out of Ramadan. So one of the great benefits of Ramadan is the initiation of that change. Either changing towards fulfilling our obligations of Allah or by staying away from the prohibitions of Allah. If I can change in Ramadan, then I can continue out of Ramadan and it can become a habit. So Ramadan provides that opportunity for change. Among the benefits of Ramadan also is that fasting helps in refinement of our manners, especially those related to truthfulness and fulfilling our trust. It cleanses one from insincere intentions, hypocrisy, and all other negative traits that cause a person to be distanced from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Huraira radiallahu an reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, <clears throat> Man lam yada' qawl az-zur wal amala bihi falaysa lillahi hajatun fi an yada'a ta'amahu wa sharabah that whoever does not give up false speech and false actions, Allah has no need of his giving up his food and drink. So Ramadan cleanses us from these negative traits and characteristics. Another benefit of Ramadan, my brothers and my sisters, is overcoming our weaknesses. All of us have weaknesses. Shaitan knows our weakness. So Allah is showing us that yes, you have a weakness, but in Ramadan you can overcome that weakness. We sometimes give ourselves excuses that this is too hard to give up. But in reality, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy for you to give up that weakness in Ramadan. For example, before Ramadan, someone spends too much time on social media and less time on the Quran. Then when Ramadan comes, that person was able to adjust and spend more time with the Quran. Then after practicing for a month, should be able to continue after Ramadan as well by Allah's help. Or if someone can give up using bad language in Ramadan, then he can continue and refrain from bad language out of Ramadan. So every one of us, Every one of us, we know our own weaknesses that we will try to give up in Ramadan. So let us continue giving up that weakness in Ramadan with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Ramadan provides that opportunity for us to overcome our weaknesses and gradually turning them into strengths. <clears throat> my brothers and my sisters, Another benefit of Ramadan is that it strengthens the unity of the Muslim Ummah. Most of the ibadat are done collectively like Salah and Hajj. So fasting, when it is done collectively with everyone doing it the same time, it is easier and it strengthens the unity of the Muslims all over the globe. No wonder the six days of Shawwal are more difficult are more difficult than fasting the entire month of Ramadan. Even now that we have to be isolated at home, fasting done collectively with all our families together and praying together at home is a means of motivation for each other. 
that's the blessing and great benefit of Ramadan as it brings us closer together and it demonstrates the unity of the entire Muslim Ummah. My brothers and my sisters, Ramadan teaches us sympathy for the hungry and to be more charitable, feeling what the poor feels. Fasting teaches us what's it, what it's like not to have food and to experience the feelings of the poor. This helps us to detach ourselves from materialism. It prevents us from being self-centered and selfish. Fasting teaches us to think about the poor and spend on them. Ibn Abbas radiallahu an said, <clears throat> the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the most charitable amongst the people. And he used to be more so in the month of Ramadan. In another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu said that he who gives food for a fasting person to break his fast, he will receive the same reward as him without anything being reduced from the fasting person's reward. So the real way to spend Ramadan is like how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions used to spend Ramadan with less food and more ibadat. At least, inshallah, now that we will be spending Ramadan at home with our families, we should spend more time on ibadat, worship, and less time on food preparation, especially for our sisters. We should decrease our intake of food in Ramadan. Remember, Ramadan is, not about, Ramadan is not about feasting. Ramadan is about fasting. So we need to avoid wasting of food as well. Another benefit of fasting is that it helps in developing patience, perseverance, and strong will. So when someone fasts and gives up food and drink, and marital relations during fasting hours, one learns restraint and patience. If we can give up what is halal in Ramadan, then it teaches us to give up haram out of Ramadan. So it teaches us patience in fulfilling our obligations to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and patience in refraining from the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and my sisters, another important benefit, benefit of Ramadan is that it offers a way for us to compensate for missed opportunities. The months preceding Ramadan, if we had missed out on performing good deeds, we still have a chance in Ramadan to make up for missed opportunities. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us Laylatul Qadr in Ramadan, which is better than a thousand months. Other deeds in Ramadan are rewarded 10 times to 700 times. So if someone was heedless and never worshipped Allah or never fasted and now wants to make a change, then Ramadan is there for that person. If someone spent all his or her life never remembering Allah, Ramadan is there for such a person. <clears throat> Laylatul Qadr provides an opportunity for a lifetime of over 80 years, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is granting you another life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us Ramadan as a way for us to earn Jannah, even if we were heedless before. It provides a way out for missed opportunities. If someone spent months and years never worshiping Allah and wants to take advantage of a way to earn multiple rewards, then Ramadan provides that opportunity for such a person to take advantage of, which always tells you 
that it's never too late to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fasting is a source for forgiveness of our sins. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man sama Ramadan imanan wa ihtisaban gufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi that whoever fast the month of Ramadan with iman, with faith, and hoping for its reward, shall have all of his previous sins forgiven for him. And the Prophet wasallam also said, as Jannah, that fasting is a shield. It protects you from sins and from the hellfire. My brothers and my sisters, <clears throat> these are just a few of the benefits of Ramadan from a spiritual perspective without looking at the additional health and medical benefits of fasting. <clears throat> all in all, Ramadan provides tremendous benefits for us that we need to capitalize and take advantage of. As the Prophet wasallam said, there is a gate, a paradise, that is called a rayyan. On the day of judgment, it will say, where are those who fasted? When the last one has entered, the gate will be closed. So let us not allow the month of Ramadan to come and go without taking full advantage and maximize our time for all the benefits and forgiveness. Let me remind myself and all of us of a hadith of the Prophet wasallam <clears throat> when he climbed the mimbar. And he said, Amin, three times. The companions inquired about this, and he responded. He told them <clears throat> that verily Jibreel alayhi salam approached me and said, Wailun liman adraka Ramadan falam yughfar lah. That woe be or destruction be upon the one who has witnessed the month of Ramadan and did not achieve forgiveness. So I said, Amin. <clears throat> so my brothers and my sisters, we should not let this month pass by without seizing the opportunity to secure our Jannah and emancipation from the hellfire by having our sins forgiven. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Make us from among those who are able to take advantage of the opportunities provided to us in Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our salawat, our zakah, our sadaqah, <clears throat> our fasting, our good deeds, our supplications, and all our ibadat. Ameen, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, our dear brother Irshad, uh, for uh, going into uh, such uh, detail in terms of the benefits that we can uh, achieve, whether it is uh, in terms of building our, um, uh, our uh, taqwa, uh, helping to establish our ihsan, uh, overcoming our weaknesses, and uh, establishing patience and refraint. I, I, one of the things that uh, particularly struck me was that all of the benefits that our brother Irshad mentioned had nothing to do with the fact that we are home. So these are benefits that can all be obtained and are available to us to reap even though we are at home uh, in self-isolation or, or what may be. Uh, so we thank uh, brother Irshad for uh, reminding us of these things. Inshallah, I will uh, now uh, call on our dear brother Sheikh Nazim Habibullah. Uh, Sheikh Nazim is uh, no stranger to us uh, here at Masjid al Sadiq, uh, and we uh, indeed are very honored and beloved to have him uh, be part of uh, this program tonight. And I'll ask uh, Sheikh Nazim to uh, uh, you know, provide his presentation on how we can maximize uh, the, this Ramadan to make it the best Ramadan. Inshallah, Sheikh Nazim. 
Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin, Wassalatu Wassalam ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'd. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we glorify him and we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy and his forgiveness. We beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his protection and his, his acceptance and his guidance. And especially we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that those amongst us who are sick to grant them shifa and to purify them and to grant them ease. And those who are in difficulties, we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them the full reward of the difficulties they are going through. And those who have returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially during this crisis, we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept them as shuhada. And we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect all of us and to allow us to witness Ramadan. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, this will be a unique Ramadan for us, inshallah. No masjid, no iftar parties or gathering, no umrah for those who make umrah in Ramadan, no visit to relatives. But in spite of all of that, this can be our best Ramadan. We have a unique opportunity, my dear brothers and sisters, to make this our best Ramadan. When this crisis started, the first question many Muslims ask, what will happen with Ramadan? What will we do during Ramadan? One brother who called me and asked, and he said, that this crisis is putting a damper on Ramadan. My dear brothers and sisters, Ramadan has nothing to do with the masjid. Ramadan has nothing to do with iftar gathering. But Ramadan is to connect us to our Rabb Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through certain actions. Ramadan is to bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through these actions. Ramadan is to strengthen our spiritual immunity. Ramadan is to sharpen and help us to refine our discipline. And none of these actions, my brothers and sisters, has to do with the masjid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Al-Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah, A'udhu Billahi min ash-shaytani rajim in just a part of an ayah, Asa an takrahu shay'an wa huwa khayrun lakum. Perhaps you will hate something, but it is best for you. Perhaps we hate the fact that we cannot go to the masjid and we cannot go to these iftar gatherings and do the things that we are accustomed to do in Ramadan. But because we cannot do this, maybe it is best for us. So how can we make this our best Ramadan? What are the actions, what are the things we need to do to make sure that this is our best Ramadan so that we can fulfill the goal of Ramadan, which is to bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to strengthen our connection with our Rabb, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the first and foremost thing, and it has nothing to do with the masjid, is to make sure that each and every one of us connect to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Ramadan is more about the Quran than fasting. Shahr Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed. And if we are to benefit from Ramadan, our first and foremost action is to connect to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to dive into the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to reflect on the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the more we dive in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more amazing things we will find. Because Ramadan comes and it goes, and many of us, because of work, because of school, because of the hectic and bustle, this, of the iftar and the tarawi, sometimes we hardly have time to turn a page in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
this Ramadan we have that opportunity to spend time with the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to look for ourselves in the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us in Surah Al-Anbiya, لَقَدْ أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكُمْ كِتَابًا فِيهِ ذِكْرُكُمْ أَفَلَا تَعْكِلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He has revealed this book in which, in which is your remembrance, meaning you are mentioned in that book. You are in the category of people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described in, in Al-Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the people of Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the disbelievers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the hypocrites. And Allah said, Afala ta'kilun, don't you reflect and ponder. Go into the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and find which category, through your actions, your habits, your behavior, your practice, which category do you fall into? Are you among the people of Jannah? And if you are not, what are the things you need to do to be mentioned among the people of Jannah? So this Ramadan can be our best Ramadan if we start by connecting to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, my brothers and sisters, it is a fact that in Ramadan, we pray more than any other time of the year. We are more keen to observe our sunnah and our nawafil. This Ramadan, my brothers and sisters, you have that opportunity to pray genuine salah. And what I mean by that, away from the noise, away from the distraction, away from spectators, between you and your Rabb Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where you stand up and pray with sincerity. Let us face it, my brothers and sisters, for many of us, Ramadan is just another day, the usual Ramadan. Work, school, iftar, tarawi, and then we start over the next day. This Ramadan, we have an opportunity to make it different. We have an opportunity to stand in Salatul Qiyam with full sincerity because Salatul Qiyam or tarawi is best prayed in the last third of the night. When there is full sincerity, when everyone is asleep, when there is quietness, only you and your Rabb Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now that we are at home, we have that opportunity, we have that time to spend that last third of the night in genuine salah, crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pray real salah to tarawi. My dear brothers and sisters, because we are either not working or working from home and we don't commute and we have that extra time, we should look at this as a blessing for us that we can pray with sincerity in the confines of our home. And while we are working or at school, sometimes we pray our fard and we have to rush back to the office. Now we have an opportunity to make up all our sunnah in this blessed month of Ramadan. Number three, my brothers and sisters, to make this the best Ramadan, we can connect to our Rabb Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through our service to humanity. This crisis reminds us, my brothers and sisters, that everything we have, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it can be taken away at any time. How many thought that they were secure and have everything, but they are without jobs today? How many thought that they have, they're all set with their business, but the business is closed today? My dear brothers and sisters, we are reminded here because of this crisis that tomorrow can be ours. We are witnessing with our own eyes people who cannot pay their rent or their bills, who have, cannot buy grocery. We have an opportunity, those of us who have, to service humanity 
And at the same time, this is a test and trial for each and every one of us. Because many may be thinking that my job might be in danger. My business might be in danger. I need to save for later. But we should know, my brothers and sisters, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our razaq. He's the provider, not you and I. So let us dig deep. Let us, let us feel it. Let us make sure whatever we give to humanity, it has an impact on us and not just the extra change. But let us dig deep where it hurts and feel it that we are serving humanity. Number four, my brothers and sisters, let us connect to our Rabb Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our families. Think about this picture. A family, husband and wife, sometimes extended family in the same home. Think about this picture, standing in the last third of the night, praying together. What can be better than that? What can be more special than that? One of my good friends, a wealthy brother, once told me, he says, I will give up all my wealth if only I can have my family back praying with me. If you have that opportunity, my brothers and sisters, don't waste it. Where you can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your family. Where you can have iftar and dinner together. On a regular Ramadan, we don't have that opportunity because of the busyness at the masjid or at school or at work. We are all at home now and we have that opportunity to do these things with our family. We have the opportunity to make this a healthy Ramadan where we eat home-cooked food. We all know, my brothers and sisters, in previous Ramadan, how often do we overeat or eat unhealthy at these iftar gatherings? How much we waste during Ramadan? We have an opportunity not to waste in this Ramadan and to save and help those who are less fortunate and to have a healthy Ramadan. We have an opportunity because we have the extra time in this Ramadan to connect with our kids and kids, our relatives, call them on the phone and connect with them and make dua for them, my brothers and sisters. My dear brothers and sisters, we always say Ramadan is a training camp. It's a training ground that prepares us for the rest of the year. But you and I know, where does training start? Training, we always say, starts in the home. So we have an opportunity to train with our families, to refine our characters, to humble ourselves, to practice good companionships with the closest people around us to practice good morals, to tame our nafs, to control ourselves and be the best, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, khayrukum khayrukum li ahlihi. the best amongst you is he who is best to his family. All these actions, my brothers and sisters, connecting to the Book of Allah, sincere salah, serving humanity, Worshipping Allah with your family, refining your character. None of this has anything to do with the masjid. This can be our best Ramadan. This can be the most rewarding Ramadan. This can be the most memorable Ramadan in the confines of our homes, my brothers and sisters. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. Allah allow us to witness Ramadan. What this crisis has taught us, my brothers and sisters, is that Ramadan is close, yet it is far. It is not guaranteed. How many of our brothers and sisters a week ago were making preparation for Ramadan? Or two weeks ago, or even a day ago, were making preparation for Ramadan? But they have returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept them as martyrs. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with Ramadan, 
Let us make it our best Ramadan. Let us get our sins forgiven. Let us come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and cry to him. Come with a clean slate. Come and let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and acknowledge your weakness and your mistakes and confess to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you hate what you did. You are sorry, you regret it, and you will never go back to it and make that sincere tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have an opportunity in this Ramadan, my brothers and sisters, to capitalize on those secret times because they are sacred days and they are sacred months and they are special days and special months and they are special times as well. They are very secret times in this month of Ramadan like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us about the last third of the night when dua is accepted at the time of breaking our fast. The special time between Maghrib and Isha. My dear brothers and sisters, these are times sometimes we take for granted. And especially when we have a hectic Ramadan and we are at the masjid or iftar gatherings, these times go by so quickly and we don't realize it. Now that we are at home, we have that opportunity to capitalize on these secret moments where we make special dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get our sins forgiven and for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our dua. My dear brothers and sisters, I close by reminding myself and you that this can be our best Ramadan, but we need to make sure we plan well. We need every single one of us, male and female, need to have our schedule. Because if you don't have a schedule, you are on someone else's schedule. You are in the schedule of the TV or social media or the schedule of your phone. But if you have a schedule, then you are controlling your time. We need to plan well. We need to set realistic goals, things that we know we can achieve. How much Quran will I recite every day? How much Quran will I actually study every day? What time will I wake up? How many raka I will pray in the last third of the night? How I will pray my ishraq and dua, salat al duha? How I will pray my nawafil? What I will do at the time of breaking fast? We need to make our schedule. We need to make sure our family makes a schedule as well where we don't waste too much time in the kitchen. And every family member should take turn in the kitchen where the burden is not on one person. We need to be consistent with our plans, my brothers and sisters, and every single one of us. It is important that at the end of every single day in Ramadan, we do an evaluation. Am I on track? Did I lapse today? What do I need to do tomorrow to make it better than yesterday? We need to evaluate our Ramadan constantly. Otherwise, Ramadan will come and will go so quickly and we will not realize it. So take stock, my brothers and sisters, and let us all work hard to make this unique Ramadan our best Ramadan. Who knows? Who knows if this will be our last Ramadan? Who knows? So treat it, my brothers and sisters, treat it like your last Ramadan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it our best Ramadan. I beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma balikhna Ramadan. Allahumma balikhna Ramadan. Allahumma balikhna Ramadan. Oh Allah, allow us to witness Ramadan and protect us and accept from us and forgive us and our family. And grant us all Jannah to the house. Akulu Kauri has a salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, mashallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to increase our brother Nazim in knowledge. We thank him for sharing those beautiful ways and words of wisdom in order to help us to make this the best Ramadan. Uh, as he outlined, uh, there are so many things that we can do that does not require, again, us to be at the masjid. Yes, during Ramadan, 
the masjid is a place where we can gather, where we can encourage each other, where we can motivate each other. And there isn't a, a way to wholeheartedly replace that. However, there are things that we can still do so that we can reap the same or even more reward out of this month of Ramadan, inshallah. Uh, I will ask if anyone has any questions. Again, you can submit your questions on the topic uh, by going into the Q&A panel, uh, the Q&A button at the bottom, and you can submit your questions, inshallah. We will try to do our best to take a few of them. Um, we have uh, one that was already submitted. Uh, inshallah, I'll ask uh, Sheikh Nazim to maybe provide some light on this. Uh, the question, uh, um, will uh, the masjid do a virtual tarawih for the community to follow? Uh, Sheikh Nazim, can you maybe help address that? Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Jazakallah khair for the question. Um, this is a question actually has been asked by many in the past couple of weeks. And it has been discussed in length by many of the learned brothers and many of the major organizations across North America has actually issued statements about this. And we at the Caribbean American Muslim Association, CAMA, will be issuing a statement on this as well. And that is that virtual salah, whether it's Salatul Eid, whether it's Salatul Jumah, whether it's Tarawih or your fourth salah, is not valid following an imam online. We encourage people to pray their salah at home with their families, salat al tarawih to pray whether individually or collectively at home. And as I mentioned earlier, salat al tarawih or salat al qiyam is best prayed in the last third of the night. So utilize that special time to pray. So there will be no virtual salah where you follow an imam online. However, if you want to follow recitation outside of salah, that's encouraged. If you want to listen to lectures and advice online, that's encouraged. But you must pray your salah in your home. Jazakallah khairan. Uh, Sheikh Nazim, um, if anyone else have any other questions, uh, you can again uh, submit uh, th through the question and answer uh, period. Uh, panel at the bottom, inshallah. Uh, while we wait for uh, any other questions that come in, I want to um, uh, maybe spend uh, the, the time to just uh, share with you. Sheikh Nazim uh, mentioned that we should have a plan. We should have a plan to, and a schedule so that we are not on anyone else's schedule. Uh, so with that, uh, Masjid al-Sadiq, there are, if you Google Ramadan planner, you will see there's a lot of Ramadan planners out there, alhamdulillah, that so many people have created. Uh, Masjid al-Sadiq has uh, shared a few, two, of them, two of them that we specifically find to be useful. Uh, the first one um, is a planner that has uh, things already filled out. So it has things like a dua of the day or a hadith of the day. Uh, it has a prayer tracker so we can make sure that we are mindful of our salah. And also, as Sheikh Nazim mentioned, praying our sunnah or our nawafil. It has a tracker to see how are we doing with regards to our Quran, a daily checklist, and so on and so forth. So this is one that is already pre-filled out and it's very easy uh, for, for us to maybe make use of. Uh, the other one also on the website is a more open-ended one. And this is one where we might want to take evaluation on our own and put down our individual goals for every day. And so these planners have a page or a, a page for every day or a page for every two days. But Alhamdulillah, it is something that we can download and you can print and you can have with you so that you make your Ramadan plan. Uh, the website to go for, for this is our website, asadiq.org slash three slash four four seven slash Ramadan planner, Ramadan dash planner. Uh, it's on the screen. Uh, and if you go to our website, it's under the articles uh, section and you can download these things and uh, print them as well. Uh, I do think we have um, uh, a question. Uh, 
uh, about uh, Salat al-Tarawi. Uh, maybe uh, Maulana Farzan, you can, you can help answer uh, this question. Uh, question is, when we bring Salat al-Tarawi at home, is it the same as it always has been prayed at the masjid or is it different? It, meaning, is it Isha, four rakah fard, and then two rakah sunnah, and then eight or 20 rakah uh, uh, sunnah for uh, Tarawi? Uh, Sheikh Nazim, can you maybe help with the question? Assalamu alaikum. So, Salat al Tarawih, so we pray our Salat al Isha as usual. And it's better if all the family members are there that we can pray in Jama'ah, so we get the extra blessing for that. We pray our Sunnah after Salat al Isha. And then we pray Salat al Tarawih. Again, I mentioned earlier, we have the whole night to pray Salat al Qiyam. And the best time to pray that is if you can delay and pray the last third of the night. However, if you know that you will not be consistent with that, or if there's a chance you will not wake up, then pray your Salat al-Tarawi, which the same way you pray in the Masjid. Some people pray eight rakah, some people pray more than that, some people pray up to 20, right? So you would pray the same way as you would pray in the Masjid. And now there is a question there on the, on the same topic, right, about reciting the Qur'an. Is it better to recite the entire Qur'an in Ramadan without understanding, or is it better to recite a portion of it with understanding? So it is always better to recite a portion of the Qur'an where you can reflect, where you can take your time and don't have to rush, where you can feel that khushu, that submission, that sincerity, where you can actually feel and understand what you're saying, where you can reflect on it, you can reflect on the message of the Quran and actually benefit from it. So it is always better to try to understand. And that is why if you will be reciting a portion of the Quran in Salat al-Tarawi, I would recommend that you, if you don't know the Arabic language, at least try to study those verses before you go into Salah. One, in that way, you will not make your salah too long because you will be reciting a short passage, and you will, but you will be reciting it with that concentration, with that sincerity, and you know what you are saying. So you study it before, then you go into salah, and when you say, Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbil Alameen, you actually can feel what you are saying. When you say, Qul Allahu Ahad, it is not like a rhyme that you are just reciting but you're actually feeling what you're saying. When you say, you understand what you're seeking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is always better to understand what you recite. Jazakallah khairan, Sheikh Tazim. Brother Irshad, a question here uh, about uh, uh, how people, religious or not so religious, uh, will they not find it hard for their hearts to be attached to Ramadan and the spiritual high of this blessed month without being at the masjid or being in the community, how should we uh, continue to have that spirit of uh, Ramadan uh, in our lives, even though we may not be at the masjid? Okay, so uh, So this is very, very important question. Um, how can you uh, develop khushu and develop your spirituality and increase your, 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 your closeness to Allah while being isolated at home? Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in the masjid only. We can find Allah at home and it is, it is very important that we utilize the time that we are here at home so that we can pray with our families and we can motivate each other to good. And as Sheikh Nazim also explained, that we can utilize this time that we are at home to spend more time with the family. So we can able to be close to Allah. We can, we can able to establish our connection with Allah. It doesn't have to be at the masjid. At home, we can pray with our family, or if we, we are living alone, we are single, we are living alone, we can pray at home also alone, single, individually. And um, 
and spend most of our time reciting the Quran or listening to the Quran also. If we don't know to recite Quran, we can listen to it so we can connect to it. Um, in this way, we can able to build our Iman and we can able to establish a closer link and a closer connection to Allah. So it doesn't have to be only at the masjid. That Islam is complete. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us legislation how we can pray and how we can carry on our Islam even in this situation where we in quarantine. So Islam is complete. It's not that Allah left out something that there we can't. No, Islam is complete and we can able to utilize every opportunity we have so that we can able to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be it at the masjid, or at home. Jazakallah khair. And I would just like to add to what uh, Brother Irshad um, uh, mentioned just now. Uh, yes, we are doing all of these things and we have the opportunity to benefit, uh, as we've outlined here tonight, at home with our families. But also uh, the masjid, uh, Masjid al Sadiq, for example, uh, will also be sharing some information. So while we are not physically at the masjid, we, we are trying to find ways for us to still have that community, that social interaction, that connection with the masjid, even though we may not be physically there this year. So it may be um, uh, following us on social media. It may be sessions like this where we can bring you information and we can share knowledge and we can remind each other about things. Um, so these are ways that we can still be able to uh, connect with the masjid. Uh, some of us may be asking about our zakah and uh, donating our zakah. We, you might normally give some of your zakah to the masjid. You can still do so. Uh, you can mail us a check. You can make a donation online. Uh, so these are all things that are still available to us. The charity that we used to give every Ramadan, now we have opportunity to give charity again also in this Ramadan. And this brings additional rewards. I was speaking to someone today who... Uh, may normally have uh, provided iftar at the masjid. And they may be saying, you know what, I'm going to take the money that I would have spent providing iftar at the masjid, I'm going to donate it to the masjid uh, for the work that the masjid is doing in whatever regards, whether it is our Feed the Hungry program, uh, repayment of our loans, and so on and so forth. So there's some of these opportunities that still allow us to be connected to the masjid so that the spirit of Ramadan can still be with us in that sense of the connection to the masjid, inshallah. Um, I uh, would just like to maybe ask about, um, uh, Sheikh Nazim had mentioned before about praying the Tarawi and there was some more questions about uh, Tarawi um, uh, in terms of uh, praying Tarawi as a Jamaat in terms of the family at home. So four or five people praying Tarawi together uh, with one leader. I think that is the intent of the question. Um, and then also a question about the least amount of Raka that uh, can be prayed, uh, Sheikh Nazim. So, so before I go into the answer for that, I just want to just add a little um, something else on the question before that about mm -hmm. people connecting to the masjid. One of the important thing on that question that we need everyone on this um, call need to be mindful of um, is that most of the people I can guarantee you who are in this call are people who would come to the masjid and who are attached to the masjid. But there is a subset of people, and this is very important, that would come to the masjid because we all know the masjid is overcrowded in Ramadan. And there is a subset of people that is connected to the masjid in Ramadan only. And there is a fear that those people, because the masjid is, you know, is not functioning during this month, those people may not function. It's important that every single one of us, and this is our duty, to somehow connect to the people we know that who would have come to the masjid only in Ramadan, reach out to them in Ramadan, reach out to them consistently, not once only, and see how they are doing. Make sure that they are still observing at least some of these things that will benefit them in Ramadan. Make sure that they are praying, make sure they are fasting, make sure that they are reciting the Quran, make sure they are staying, staying away from wrong things, make sure they are doing something, especially that they are all at home now as well, and they have the time. It's an opportunity for each and every one of us to do some extra good by reaching out to these people and to show that we not only care for ourselves, but we care for everyone in our community. 
Um, and the question of the Tarawi, whether it's prayed individually or um, collectively, it can be prayed, you know, if you have a family that you can pray together, then that's better. If you live by yourself only and you pray, you know, you can pray individually at that. Um, in terms of the least raka, you can pray two raka. That's the least. And you can pray much more than that, up to 20. Jazakallah uh, khairan. Thank you, uh, Sheikh Nazim, um, uh, Brother Irshad, uh, Maulana Farzan is uh, back with us. Uh, thank you uh, all for sharing some of your time and your knowledge here with us tonight uh, with regards to this uh, special um, month of Ramadan and how we can maximize the month given the current situation. As I was mentioning earlier, uh, set our Ramadan goals, set and use a planner. We have the uh, tools available for, for you to download on our website. And if you uh, would like to still um, uh, do additional um, uh, learning about uh, yourself and how to motivate uh, yourself. Uh, uh, the brothers at Oak Tree Institute have a uh, four uh, session, uh, uh, live session with Brother Muhammad Hassan. Uh, Brother Muhammad Hassan is uh, no, no stranger to us at Majid Sadiq. Uh, he was here and he, he spoke at our uh, uh, fundraising dinner, I think two years ago. He was here last year. Um, a few months ago, uh, speaking to our youth about uh, bad habits and unhealthy habits. And so this uh, four-week course actually will uh, help us to train for Ramadan and how to detox our time, look at our unhealthy habits, uh, looking at how we master our health, our faith, our character, our contribution, and learning about the power of dua and our personal connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And last you know, in how our faith impacts our thoughts and our emotions. Uh, this is an unusual perspective. Brother Muhammad Hassan is a psycho, licensed psychotherapist. So he provides counseling and he does a lot of work in terms of coaching and development of individuals and people. Uh, he's definitely a motivational person, uh, uh, speaker. Uh, the, the cost of the course is $47. But Alhamdulillah, uh, the brothers at Oak Tree have extended a special discount of 30% uh, for Masjid as uh, community. So you can enroll uh, there. You can just put in the, the discount code uh, Oak Tree 30. That's O-A-K-T-R-E-E 30. Um, it is four sessions. It starts tomorrow, Sunday, the 19th at 1 p.m. Uh, and it's two hours every Sunday. So from one uh, to ends at three o'clock. Uh, with uh, Brother Hassan. So um, this is an opportunity in case anybody would like to take this uh, uh, benefit, inshallah. Uh, last but not least, I want to do um, an advertisement for uh, our youth uh, tomorrow night. Uh, the youth at Masjid as Siddiq has uh, planned or had planned actually a youth program a, a few weeks ago. And obviously, um, since uh, we're all at home, uh, the youth have been trying to figure out the ways that they can still in interact and engage with, e with each other and have some fun and some games. One of the things at our youth program is a game of Kahoot. And um, they, inshallah, are going to try this uh, virtual game of Kahoot tomorrow. Uh, that's at 8.30 p.m. Uh, now, it's very uh, simple. Uh, there are two steps required. Number one, you join, just like you joined tonight, with the Zoom conference at... Um, uh, go.assadiq.org slash youth. That's the, the website to go to from your computer or your iPad. Once you join, like you joined tonight, and that, we that like website, you'll be able to see the questions and then hear from the, the hosts and so on and so forth. Then to actually play the game, everybody at home, uh, whether there's four people, two people, how many ever, at home, everybody can play along using their smartphones and instructions will be given to you uh, tomorrow night at the game, uh, inshallah. Um, I, I said that was the last. I forgot to mention, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Kama will be having a panel question and answer session tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Uh, stay tuned to our um, uh, social media and other platforms, and we'll provide information on that. Uh, we'll, we'll have uh, some uh, scholars and uh, imams and so on also trying to answer as many questions as they can with regards to uh, Ramadan and uh, things that are upcoming. I would like to 
uh, end by first uh, thanking our uh, distinguished uh, panelists and speakers. We thank them again for their time. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase them in knowledge and increase them in their abilities and help them to continue to serve their communities and uh, be a benefit to us. Uh, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless their families and bless everyone here tonight uh, that is participating in this Amen. I mean. Uh, inshallah, we'll close with the uh, recitation of the du'a in Surah Al-As. Uh, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik wa nashadu wa la ilaha illa ant wa nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilai wal as inna l-insana lafi khus illa ladhina amanu wa amilu salihat wa tawasaw bil haq wa tawasaw bil sab. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.